Hey, let's get uh, rolling right away. Um, we won't make this too long. Uh, we're going to be doing weekly conference calls on this. Um, you guys are going to be getting an update on the new algorithm that uh, does automation for you. And then also you're going to get a, a new indicator that um, produces um, these arrows on these pullbacks. Uh, you have software already in your hands, all those that lease a program already. It's the same exact software. I just added a little, a uh, few bells and whistles like the ATR trailing stop and uh, a few other things like um, it now captures momentum trades also and it will capture tweezer trades also. So um, this algo will catch all the setups that I go over in the live room um, and uh, you guys guys will be getting this update um, here shortly. Once you receive it, we will be doing weekly calls. Listen, I know everybody's busy, um, so um, you don't have to attend these calls. They are recorded, um, so members will get these recorded calls um, um, out to you after Gerald renders it. So um, I'm going to try to keep these uh, weekly calls short as possible. Uh, we're going every single week, so every single week from here on out, um, uh, why we're getting the software out to you and after we get the software out to you and I'm going to show you how to market replay tonight I'm going to show you every trade since the beginning of the year on one of my favorite time uh, well not time frames per se but uh, Rinko bars that I like to use and then I'd like to show you how this new uh, uh, I added four trailing ATR stops to the program uh, to reduce risk and increase reward so we're going to go over that also. So everybody, we'll, uh, we'll make sure that uh, you guys get a recorded copy of this and we're good to go. So before we get started, let's just make sure we understand what's going on. Um, I'm not going to go over the trade setups because we know how to do the trade setups. I'm strictly going to go into the strategy night. So when we go into the strategy, it's looking for these trades. Here's the trades it's going to look for and here's the trades it's going to look to execute. This is today's trading on the S&P. Um, it looks for two two setups, and if you replay my conference calls and my videos at daytradingthefutures.com under videos, you got a lot of videos on these two setups. These these are the only two setups that um, that we need to look for on a daily basis, and um, this works on all markets. Um, it doesn't matter. We got traders. Uh, I show the the S and P live in the room, uh, twenty three out of twenty four hours a day. We keep the charts up Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern all the way to Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. I let them run 24 hours on our server. So um, the, the S&P is viewable without having a NinjaTrader platform, um, but we do have the software available to put on your NinjaTrader uh, platform also. So, uh, but we do let this run. We let it run around the clock only on the S&P. We don't have enough screen to show other markets. Um, so replay those videos at day trading the futures to see these specific two setups. So the first setup before I get into this, I'm just going to click the, the auto is going to look for and I'll show you how it runs it tonight. Uh, it's an FZR trade. And the FZR trade is simply this. We have a zone uh, uh, indicator that pr predicts and projects where the market should turn on any given market. And like I said, we only show the S&P, but this works on all futures. It works on all stocks. It works on all currency. It even I got traders trading the Bit, uh, Bitcoin futures, Bitcoin, the nano market. Uh, we got traders that trading soybeans, uh, corn. We got traders that trading the Russell 2000. You name it, wh whatever it is. We got traders trading indexes on it. We even have traders that's trading um, uh, OEX options on it. So whatever market that you are looking at, this is this algorithm is applicable to that market because it's a plug-and-play algo, meaning it looks for the same two setups all day. Because the market can only do two things. It's either going to go vertical or, or it's going to go chop, and we all know that. So the, the, the key is 50% of trading is typically getting the trend right. You don't want to counter trend trade, especially the last couple of days. If you counter trend traded uh, these markets the last couple of days, you've been taken to the woodshed. Not today because we're looking for a bear trap, which I was right this morning with members. We got that big move up. I was anticipating, uh, but uh, typically, uh, you know, you just you, you just don't want to go against trend. That's why the zone is so important. We're looking for reversals in the zone. This automated algorithm is designed to look reversals inside the zone. 
But what happens is that's called a full zone retracement, FZR. What happens is the market just is too weak sometimes or it gets, it gets rolling to the downside and you get what's called momentum in the market. So this is the second thing that happens in the market on all these markets. You get what's called a MOMO trade and that is what's called momentum. So any given market you look at, NASDAQ, Future, Russell, you know, the S&P 400, 500, whatever you're looking at, it's the same exact type of deal. You're either going to trend or chop, so you want to stay with the trend. So we would like to look at where the overall scope of things are using our zone indicator. And our zone is red. If our zone is red, we're shorting only. So when a zone's red, the algo will only look for shorts. I'm going to show you. And it will only look for these setups. It'll look for an FZR trade that we have our indicator that for you manual traders that want to manually do it, uh, that you can get in using these arrows automatically fire for you. Uh, that's an FZR full zone retracement. And this is a momentum trade because a momentum trade says, hey, I'm outside the zone. I'm now running. This is today's action. I'm now running to the downside. And that's when my oscillator down here, I have it pre-programmed into the algorithm already. If it is below 20, 20, that green line, it's, and you, you're going to get an arrow that fires short as long as my moving averages are in place and my zone is red. All right, that's called a MOMO trade. As long as I stay below 80, I stay below 80 on my oscillator and an arrow fires, I have certain conditions where that arrow needs to fire. If that arrow fires and that oscillator is below 80, then it is a typical MOMO trade. If it's below 20, that's called an extreme MOMO. That means... We're looking for this market to just get uh, taken to the woodshed, and it sure did. My oscillator picked it up, and my algorithm picked it up. 39, or the low of that was 30, 30 and a quarter, all the way down to, what, 07. So you had it just a 23-point run on the S&P. So what it's going to do, the algo, it's going to look for these FCR trades, Momo trades, and these tweezer trades. So play the videos I have. I'm not going to go in detail with this. I'm going to show you how this works on the algo you're going to be getting also. Some of you are going to want to do automated trading, and that's just how it is. Some of you want to get in there, let the computer do the work for you, have your targets for you, turn it on, let it execute trades. So if you do that, you will have to sign a risk disclaimer. Obviously, you know, future or past performance does not is indicative of future performance. You know, we, we know that. That's why you sign all these disclaimers before trading. We all know the risk of trading when you sign those disclaimers. So if you're going to automate you will have to sign a, a, a nice risk disclosure. That's just to protect yourself uh, and to make sure you know, understand the risk with auto trading. So we do, uh, you have to sign that before we do that. So if you do elect to auto in, some of you just want a manual in, and that's fine. Uh, the indicator is going to be the same, uh, give the same signals as the automation. Meaning when these arrows fire, that's when the automation is going to put you in. So your indicator is going to match up. We're going to match up. Let's see. Turn, oh, we can see a hold on one sec, Gerald. All right. I got you, man. I'll, I'll, when I go to the other screen, I'll make sure we can see it. Uh, but we want to make sure that, uh, um, that we understand that you can, when these arrows fire off, that's when the automation is going to fire off exactly. They mirror each other. So whatever time frame or Rinko bar you look at, whether you, you know, you may want to put this not on our Rinko bar. You know, we like using Uni Rinko bars. I, I love using Uni Rinko bars. Here's the Uni Rinko, and, uh, and I love using this, this, uh, this Uni this way. And some of you will, will want to do smaller Uni Rinko bars, and some of you want to do larger Rinko bars. If you increase your Rinko bar size, you're going to get less trades. If you decrease your Rinko bar size, which I'll show you how to do, you're going to get more trades. So some of you will want to possibly do scalping. You'll want to do a either a larger Rinko bar with a larger stop and scalp or a small Rinko bar and have a lot of trades with a lot of scalps. So I'm leaving the code open to you, which I'll show you tonight, where you can you can make you can let it perform how you want it to perform. You want more trades, reduce the Rinko size. And I'll show you how to increase trades in the parameters. Or if you want less trades, you're more of a position trader. You said, you know what? I like this guy right here. I'm, I'm going to try for, you know, because what, what I like to do on my larger time frames, 21st target, 42nd target, 80, 30 target, 80 ticks, and 1,000 for, for, uh, 1, ticks on the fourth target. 
a lot of traders are like, why a thousand ticks? Because my ATR that I built in now, yesterday, and I'll show you, it ran all the way into the close, all the way into the close on one trade. Friday, it ran all the way into the close, or two Fridays ago, it ran all the way into the close at 10 o'clock in the morning, it ran all the way into the close. And it turned out to be a heck of a trade. I mean, it was it was a big trade. And you'll see that on the algo tonight when I replay it. So you can, when you do this, guys, is that this is the room also. In the room, I show this. This is my main time frame. I show this Rinko size right here, a 120.20. And this is this is my own tick trend, my own offset, my own tick reversal. I didn't. This no one has this that I know of in any other room. This uh, of of these numbers that I put in, but uh, I also will, will show. I'm going to show you a larger Rinko, a 135.35 tonight. Also, that catches less trades with more accuracy. So the more the the, the smaller time frame you go to, you're going to get a ton more trades on FCR Momos. If you increase your Rinko size, you're going to get less trades. Your accuracy is going to go up, but your stop's going to go higher. So you have to, you, you can cater it towards your risk tolerance, and that's key. My risk tolerance is different than yours. Yours is different than mine. My account size is going to be different than yours. Your account size is going to be different than mine. We're all going to have different account sizes, different, different risk parameters, but the key is this, and I'm going to show you how to do this. The key is, is drawdown. You, you, can't, you can't come in and, 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 and trade off of a large time frame if you want a real small drawdown. You know, so that's the key. And I'm going to show you how we can work through that also. Okay. So let's get through that. So go to play the videos, but these algo, I'm going to show you now, it's going to look for these setups. So let's go to our algorithm. Gerald, can you see up here, can you see the MES and the S&P? Okay. Is that under the video? Look at the top. Okay. So we're good. All right. So let, let's go. Let's go in and, and, and see see uh, uh, what we're going to do here. So this is today's action. This is the uh, big contract, the S&P, all right, the ES. And over here is the micro, okay? So when you're going to, when you get the program and you're like, okay, I, I want to I use the, I want to use automation with the program. And you want to, here's a process you want to do. First of all, you got to find a, a Rinko bar size that you like, okay? I like I like Rinko bars one one thirteen thirteen through one thirty five thirty five. If you want to go higher than that, you can do it. It works well. If you want to go lower than that, you can go to one five five. I'm just saying, if you go below one thirteen thirteen, you're getting a lot of trades, a lot of FCRs, a lot of momentum setups. If you go from a one thirteen to a one twenty, let's say. That is where you're going to get the most trades that are accurate that are a lot of trade setups over and over again. If you take trades like that, then you're going to see a lot of trades that come up, but they're on smaller time frames. When you get to 12020 or 12525 or 13030 or 13535, I'm showing you the 13535 today, is that once you get to that Renko size, you're going to see your accuracy. Your accuracy goes way up because these zones are very, very accurate in producing bounces from the zones. So the less trades you have outside the zone, the less risk you're going to take and so on, and you let the runners run with the ATRs, et cetera. So that's the first thing you got to do. You got to, when, when you come in, you got to, you can test these though. You can test all the time, all the Rinko bars. You can start with all of them. You can test all of them. You can go 113, 13, all the way to 135.35. Find which one you like the best. All of you are not going to have the same. All of you are not going to have the same targets. All of you is not going to have the same stop. All of you is not going to have the same thing. So <clears throat> you can find what fits your trading style, your account size, your risk tolerance, right? That's key. That's the first thing you got to do. So the first thing you have to do when you start this stuff is you have to look at um, Rinko bar size. What Rico bar size? What Rico bar size do we want? Because then, if you, from that Rico bar size, what stop size do I want? What what stop size do, do I want? Meaning, if I if I look at a Rico bar, so so here's how these Rico bars work, and and this is how you're going to figure this out, and this is what is going to accelerate you right away. 
you can pretty much get this program and and test it the first week and understand if it's going to work for you or not in automation and that time for time or that Rico size is going to work for you when when it's trading during the day why here's why what I've done with this program is this it almost all strategies out there like to look at the historical data right they'll go in the historical data and they'll come in here and they'll go over and hit historical data and then they'll pop up a, a historical data like this right they'll pop up a historical data and like and they'll show you a great number like a big number a great number like this what they're failing to do though is is typically off of a lot of these strategies and I've traded a lot of strategies before gosh I'm well over 30 30 35 strategies I program myself uh, but uh, over the that with strategy runner that I used automation so I've used automation and automation with TradeStation that I've had for almost what 13 14 years so I've used automation through all of them and the one thing all the strategies that I bought through other providers or other vendors the problem they had is if you look at the strategy performance is the entry what it doesn't show you is a slippage one two it doesn't show you where you're possibly going to get filled out in a live market what I did with this strategy is for you guys is I'm I'm filling on the I'm showing you a possible live fill where you're gonna get filled in a live market and mean what, what what does that mean if you look at some of these other strategies what they do is they show you where you're getting filled at the open of the next bar right well it's always the high of the next bar on any strategy you do so if you ever have any strategy you're looking at or what have you it's usually almost always the high of the next bar is where you're going to get filled. You're not going to get filled at the open. That's the best case scenario. So if you look at any strategies, make sure you understand that. What I did in this program, I made sure to make your life a lot easy, easier. Instead of having to run market replay all the all time, I can say, okay, come in here. Can't hit me on, this, on these parameters that I put in, hit historical, and I should be right around here when I get finished, when I run my market replay. I should be pretty close. So as far as this time frame, you know, you're looking at um, this is the type of trades that it's run as far as this Rinko goes. All right. This is the type of production it's done according to this. So that's the first step you got to go. You got to find this. Now, is the historical going to be 100% accurate? Absolutely not. But it gives you, it, it helps your acceleration to find what Rinko bar you want to use. Because if I, if I hit historical and I had a losing right if this was if this was upside down and I had a big net total net profit red then you don't want that you, your parameters are set wrong or your targets are set wrong or you just don't want that type of Rinko size per that typical market that's gonna set you apart right away okay now that will help you out so that's the first thing you do get find a Rinko size and you, like I said you to each his own you can find out you don't have to use the ones I'm, I'm saying you have to use but typically one one thirteen thirteen through one thirty five thirty five is a sweet spot if you want to go higher and be a position trader fine you look at strategy performance it should tell you pretty much you're getting filled at the high of this bar it's pretty much going to narrow you down if you're close right that's the first thing so that's the first thing we want to do we want to look at performance based upon Rinko size so well first you find find Rinko size and Rico size is this. If you're going to do this, Rico size and stop. If you use a 35 Rico, you're going to stop. So this is the uh, this is great for micro trading um, and to know when you're trading the big contract. If you use a 35, you better be below 35 on your stop you, and, and plus or minus two two on your ATR trail. So this is a 37 ATR trail because what happens with these Rinko bars is once you get filled here, it should never close red on you. So you're going one bar back, you should trail this. It should trail one by one bar. Keep trailing. And I have it two ticks below that swing. So if you use a 20 Rinko, then you should use a 22 ATR until you hit your first target. If you use a 13 Rinko, you should use a 15 trail to your first target. If you use a 10 Rinko, you should use a 12 tick trail to your first target, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So 
that, that that's key. So you need to find the Renko size and stop. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing I just showed you, you want to look at performance because I've got it projecting the high of the bar, so it's going to be pretty close. So you want to look at the performance after you find after you log after you turn it on. And you want to see what type of performance it's doing. So if I click this, and and I like what it says, you know, I click that historical. I mean, obviously this is good because it it's showing the last ten days it's had um, all winners. But you know, depending if I go to a different different Rinko bar, it won't show this. I mean, it may show there's more losers than winners on a one five five according to the parameters I put in it, right? So that's the first thing is you want to be close in performance. So you want to have good performance. The third thing you want to do, and that's why this thing's pretty much easy to uh, back test, is once you do that, the third thing you want to do is you want to run a market replay, which we're going to do in here a second. So now what we want to do is we want to run market replay and see historically during live market sessions, is it going to match my historical performance? All right, and I'm going to show you how to do market replay in a second. So that's the third thing you want to do. So I want to find my Renko size and my stop. You know, how much stop am I willing to take? You know, if if, if I'm not willing to take, if I'm not willing to take, uh, if I have a 25 up, 25, 125, 25 Renko size up, if I'm not willing to take a 27 tick initial stop, initially, then I don't want to trade that time frame, I mean that Renko size, if that makes sense. You always got to give it about two ticks with these trailing stops, all right? Second performance, look at your historical performance. It should be pretty close to what you want. Then we do market replay, which we're going to do right now. And if market replay, if you get done with it and it matches this pretty close right there, and if we go back and that matches that over the last 10 days, then it tells you you want to start simming it now. Now you want to go back and let it just run live sim. Turn it on and let it run sim. Oh, not let it run sim. There we go. Let it run sim. Now you want to let it run sim. Now you're saying, okay, I'm going to get up and why I'm trading manually these setups. And this is what I did back testing and forward testing and running it live also with the software. I just have ton of 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 um, screens open and letting it run and letting it run sim through there. If sim is producing great results for you, and this is not over a one day period, let it run sim for X amount of days. Listen, this is educational software. You know your risk tolerance. You can do as little time as you want, much time as you want. I like having a good test, a random sample. So let it run sim, and if it's taking these trades the way market replay should it took it, and the performance is taken, now you got all three jiving. You got your performance working, your market replay working, and your sim working. Now what I educate traders is is run micros live. Now if you want to run micros live, micro is one tenth of the big contract. So instead of getting the S and P. Right? If this historical is here, and historically it did this amount over the last 10 days, then if one tenth is the micro, you're talking about 1,250 if it's going to match, match it. And it, it may be off by 100 or so, 200 typically I see, but it may be more on the micro sometimes, but it's, it's right around this number. So the reason you run the micros is, why would you run a big contract on something that you've never traded live money with on an automation? And that way you do not um, expose yourself. Also, when you're running this, and this is A, you want to do this. You don't have, I have it set to four contracts. Bring it down to, bring it down to less contracts. And I, I have it so you can adjust it. Lower contract size. So now not only you're taking micros, you're taking one contract maybe to the first target or two contracts. Let the first target hit, 
let the ATR trail take you out the second target. Now I'm taking myself to a lot lower risk, right? Because you have lower contracts. All right. So I show you how to adjust that. I do not limit the number of contracts you can do. You can do multiples of two and you can do multiples of one. All right. So there's that. Now, the thing you have to do is this before and after news. So, so that's what you do. So, so that's what you can do on run micro. If everything's working well for you, and this is totally up to you guys for risk tolerance, then you can increase size for runners, increase micro size, or go big contract. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. We're looking at increase in the market size. We're going to big contract. So this is totally up to you guys. So like I said, we educate you guys on how to run this and all that stuff, but it's risk is totally up on your end. So that is a great way to approach the software. Right? Now, that's one thing. Here's what you need to do. If you do that, if you run the auto, you need to have your account number and contact number to the trading desk. And you need to have it on speed dial or have it where you have it at all times. What happens with the automated trading, and it's happened to me before, and your ninja trader could stall you could a lot of things could happen where your power goes out these stops are not resting orders you don't know if it kept your stop in or not you call put your account number tell them your account number and say flatten all positions all right that's why i'm educating traders to do it's a safe way to do it do it immediately like that it'll save yourself a big headache i lost a lot of money before in the forex not doing that by holding positions, it froze, the server froze, and it cost me quite a bit of money. So, you know, just make sure you're aware of that. Secondly, this software should not be run through news. You should not run the software five minutes prior. And even if you're manually trading before five minutes or five minutes after, news of red news events red news events now how can i look for red news events the best thing you do i educate traders around everybody you go here very simply you go to forexfactory.com i'm actually working on a program that will automatically show this on your charts programming it so it will show up on your charts on any chart you look at so you can see it every morning and then what you can do is make sure you, I have it right here. It only looks for what? Red impact number. So yesterday on the 18th, we had a red impact number at 830. So you do not want to turn this algorithm on to automate, for automated trading at 825 or after. or So you, you, the, the dead spot, meaning turn it off from 825 to 835, period. If it's a red impact number, do not turn it on because guess what? The, the, FZR trades and Momo trades don't work. No trades work. Why? It's crazy volatile, right? So that's a great way to do it. Now, you just got to go to the filter over here, click on forexfactory.com, forexfactory.com, click Red Impact. And listen, you can print this out on Sunday nights is what I like to do. I, I see the whole week, you know, the whole week, and I know where the Red Impact is. I don't care about the yellow and the, and the, and the orange. But it's against the USD. Apply the filter. It's against the USD red impact numbers. That's going to save you a lot of headache, right, from, from auto in and auto out. So that's going to save you a lot, a lot of headache from that. So make sure you do that. So that's a big thing I want you guys to understand also. So that's one thing I want to educate you on. Those are key things right here that, that you need to review. Don't run the software before five minutes or five minutes after, right, before or after red news events account number and con and and contact not contract contact
contact number just in case it goes down. Okay. She is trying to educate you the pitfalls of auto trading. It happens. It happens. So just make sure we're aware of that and you're good to go. All right. So to recap before we're going to run this, you look at your Renko size and stop to start when you get the program. Check your performance out by right clicking on the chart after you enable it and you can see what historically it's done and you can see historically what's done there and if it's something you like to say okay that looks pretty good confirm with market replay I'm going to show you how to do that right now we confirm with market replay to make sure that uh, we understand how that replay matches up with performance and if that looks good then you run sim you can run it sim just turn the program on and it's not going to take any live monies out of your account you can let it run sim and just say, okay, this is feeling great. My targets are hitting great. I like my ATR that I have in, etc. And then if you do want to run live, if you decide to run it live, it's totally up to you guys. You can run it live. It will run live trades in your account. Um, it, you can do micros. Micros are one-tenth of the big contract. And then lower your contract size at first. It, I have it set to do four contracts as a default. Lower it down to one contract, two contracts, three contracts, four contracts. And if you guys have more experience in our professional traders, we have a lot of traders outside the room, inside the room that have been doing this a long time, you can increase the micro size or go to big contract as much as you want. That's a good place to start right there, okay, when you get the program. All right, that's a great place for you to get going. So let's take a look at this. Let's get rolling here. So let's just take a look, get this off here. So what we're going to do is this. Another thing is this. What I like to do is I like to do so I'm going to show you this. I got the trading hours against the U.S. equities RTH real time. That means it's going to start looking for these setups at 930. The reason I like to do that, and this is my personal preference, knowing you don't listen. This is educational software. You can do what you want with it as long as you sign the risk disclaimers. Run with it as fast and slow as you want. But what I'm saying though is, is it it avoids me getting caught up on trading right after the 8:30 news, right? So, uh, um, but if you want to start your time at 8:35, I have it set under the algorithm where you can put a time to only start looking at trades at 8:35. Also, but you can change this. And if I go here, and if I go down to 24/7, then. And I'm going to look for all trades 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all right? And I click on that. And now what's going to show me is it's going to show me the data of 24 hours instead of what I just showed you. I'm showing you on market replay, and it's going to show you from 9.30 to 4 p.m. all the trades is taken per this specific Renko bar that I like to use. So if you would like to go to a different – 24-7, uh, um, instead of a doing a, um, instead of doing um, the 9-2, right, you're going to get, you can see your, 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 you went up, you had one drawdown of what, I think, what, 650 on the big contract, but you can see the results are still looking great as far as this goes, so I like doing 9.30 to 4, but you guys can do 24 hours a day if you'd like to also. You just got to change your, what I'm showing you today is um, is 24-7, uh, not 24-7, but real time, and that's 9.30 to 4 o'clock. So that's something else you guys can do when you get the software. You can go 24-7, you go RTH, real time, or, or whatever you guys want to do. It's just going to change your performance, okay? And the reason that's important is is because you get um, – yeah, I'll, guys, I'll answer questions after we get down through here, okay? I'll answer all, all, the, all the questions for you. So I want to get this for the recording and get this thing rolling. I'll answer these questions why this thing's back testing, you, and I'll answer them all. Um, so that's another thing. You can go 20 – you can have it uh, – if you trade the, let's say, crude oil, crude oil opens up at 9 a.m., and it closes early, right? 2.30. So you may just want to trade from 9 to 2.30. You can go in here into the NYMEX and click NYMEX. NYMEX 1 right there. NYMEX Metals 1. 
and you know you, you're going to get that from nine to uh, two thirty. So you know you can you can you can that way you know the algorithm is only trading during volume hours. All right. So before we get going, let me show you the inside of the algo a little bit. And let me start back testing this here for you. So let's disable this. So you can enable it or disable it a couple ways. So let's do it this way first. So when you actually have the program, you can actually go under your Ninja Trader, um, your, your, your tab here. Now if I want to click this on, I just see this box enable. I just cl I click on it right away. That's the easiest way. I like to do it. And then the strategy comes in. That's why you don't have to go strategy, scroll all the way down, click enable, and all that stuff. If you just click on that, it's going to enable. Now, if it's not red, green, it's not enabled. See how it's green? That means it's enabled. So make sure you understand that. If it's green, it's enabled. The second thing you want to look is under account name. You can change this to a live account, a sim account, and a playback account. Make sure under account name, if you don't want it taking monies out of your account, it better not have your account number in here, right? It better say SIM 101. Make sure that, SIM 101. If you want live monies going in there, then you just hit your account number and it's going to start taking some live trades out of your account. If you want playback, it should say playback. But if it's green, it's on. If it's not green, it's white. Okay? So very important that you guys understand as far as that goes, um, what we want to be doing. Now, let's go look inside the algorithm. So what I did is I included on this algo, I included a trail one, a trail one ATR, a trail two ATR, a trail three ATR, and a trail four ATR. And I'm going to explain that real quick. And I'm going to show you why. I got targets one through four. So if you just wanted to trade, uh, if, if you want to trade, more contracts or less contracts you go down here entries per direction so if I if I wanted to go and I want to say just do two contracts then I change this to two right and I enable and now I'm only going to do two contracts not four so when I enable this then I'm looking at just two contracts that's it not four when it comes up you'll see so you can go two, three, four, five, six, whatever you want to do. Now it's just in two contracts. One contract, two contract. Same thing, you go into performance. You would click it, and for two contracts for the last 10 days, that's what you're looking at. So you're in the right direction, right? So that's your historical performance. Remember, historical performance does not mean future performance is going to be exactly the same. So it can lose more or make more. So just remember that. That's why you signed the disclaimer. But this gives you a good start to understand what the, the process is because I got to fill out the high of the bar. It's going to be pretty close. All right. So that being said, let's go back and change that back to you can change your contract size inside the angle. And we're going to have, once we get this out to everybody, to show you how to do this, let's go back to four contracts. All right. Now, if you wanted to do this, let's say this. Let's say, like, I got the target one at 20, 40, 60, 1,000. What that means is this. Let me click it back in it. If you got 1,000 ticks, then what it's going to show you is it's going to show you, it's going to show you your last contract can run all the way into the close. And that's what happened yesterday. Yesterday, so, yesterday at the close, we had this big trade that happened. This happened in the algorithm yesterday. Yesterday was just a phenomenal day on the big contract and the and the small contract. So I have it set for this. This is my 35 with a, let's see, what was my ATR? I believe it's 38. Is my first trail. Let me make sure. Yeah, 38. So I got 38 as my first trail, 70 as my final trail. So what it says is this. The most risk you're going to take in the beginning of a trade is the initial first target you're going to try to get to, whether whatever time frame you trade. So I got to set just out. I'm 35. I got an ATR at 38 trailing this thing. So what it's saying is, if this turns a green bar and closes outside of my trailing stop, it's going to stop me out of all contracts. So you can make your first trail really tight, and the reason being is, is that's where you take the most risk. And you can have, when it's when your first target's hit, your second trail will kick in until your second target's hit. 
then your third trail will kick in, then your fourth trail all the way down. I just had to, for the purposes of examples, I showed, and I had this in the room, uh, target two, three, and four were all 70 ATR. But this shows you how you can hold into close. It held all the way into the close. And I, I showed this in the room uh, yesterday, and I let it just show you how I said here, after I hit this target, I left this in the room. I said, I'm going to try to hold this all the way into the close, and it exited with the 50-point S&P gain just off that move because of that 70 ATR. I would not go higher than 70 ATR, guys, I think because that's just outside of my zone. My zone's 54. You guys know I love 54 as my zone. 38, 54, I just love it to death. It likes to reverse markets. Um, but 70 is my ultimate um, level that, that I think that, um, that I like to use. But you guys can use it any way you want. There's four uh, targets, though. One, two, three, four, and the ATR will trail that. If you ever close any time outside of this ATR trail or this trail, it will exit all contracts. Okay? It'll exit all contracts. All right, so that's a good base to start. Let me get this thing running because I know Gerald's going to kill me for letting this thing run too long. So um, let's, let's get the connection. Let's disconnect it, right? We're going to disconnect it, and let's go in here, and we're going to look for, when you back test this, go under Tools, go to Historical Data. Once you get to Historical Data, you're going to hit Market Replay. I'm not Market Replay. Hit load. This is the easiest way to do it. You guys can do it other ways. Hit Load. Hit Get Market Replay Data. Put your con. Let's see. We're looking at the micros. So go here, Micros, 323, and then here's today's date. Hit 18 hit download. So if you just want to download a specific number of days, you can see down here it starts downloading. Then I, after it's done, go to 17, hit download. You can see right here, loading data. Then I go to, I get the whole week, 16, download, loading data. It's very quick. I'll go last week, 13. You get the point. I'm downloading all my data for the ES12. So you can do that. If you're going to do it on a week-to-week -week basis, they have, you can do that also. But that basically shows you how to do it, okay? I've already downloaded this data, so we don't have to do this. But that's the easiest way to do it, is you go into Tools. I mean, historical data. Like I said, you go to Load. Make sure you load. For hit Load first. you got to hit Load first. Get Market Replay. And then you can start downloading that data. Once it's downloaded, you're good to go to, to start back testing this. Go to Connections and hit playback connection. All right, now this comes up. Your playback connection comes up. Now it's loading. See it's loading here, loading data, loading data. So right when it's done loading data, what we're gonna do is we can replay the dates we can play back the dates that you want to see, um, that you want to, um, you play back the dates that you want to see um, in the algo. So here's 12. We're going to go back all year and then start trading till 3. So at 3 right there, you want to click on it. Now it's loading the data. So it's going to take all the data from 1.3 to 1.19 on the S&P and the S&P micros. And I'll answer questions once it starts start running, and then you can look at the profit and loss, how it, how it likes to do it. What I'm running is 9.30 to 4 o'clock trades. It's going to take, it's going to show you every trade based upon my parameters that I have set in the algo with a 38 initial stop and a 70 ATR runner, okay, with four contracts, with a 20, 40, 60 thousand tick target on the big contract. On the small contract, I want to show you how you can do not 1,000 ticks at the end. I've got a 20, 40, 60, 80 tick target. Okay, I want to show you the difference. So once that's done, make sure you need replay. Make sure the account name, you put it under replay. Put it under uh, replay. So go down to account name. Hit playback. Hit OK. Make sure it's on play. It can't be sim if you're playback, right? And make sure when you're simming, make sure it's on sim. Always look why that is because you don't want to be running live trades when you're trying to sim. All right, now we're good. 
So there we go. So now you want to go in and you can either toggle here, double click there, or just come in here all the way down to enable. Working on right here. Click enable. Working on. You can see it's green on one of them, waiting for my micro to go green. Then you can turn this sucker on. Turn it on thousand max. You don't want to be waiting around all day. You know, go make yourself a cup of coffee, have a glass of wine, come back and look. So if you do 24 hours, it's going to tick like this, right? It's going to show you trades 24 hours. See, so it's going to show you all these trades. That, that was just an FCR right there. These are trades on the 24-hour chart it would be taking. But I want to show you what it looks like on the, um, and we can run 24 hours next week. I want to show you what it looks like on the just running 930 to 4. But you see 24-hour session, it will take all these trades according to this time frame. This is the 12020. So, but what you're looking at, see it's 909, it's going to start taking trades. Now it's going to start looking for trades. Now we are looking for trades. Downtrend there, the S&P got long, first, second target out. This is fast, first, second target out. There's the ES. Here's your profit loss up here. So there's your profit loss so far. This is this is only on 1-3. 1.3 at 11 a.m., 11.30 a.m., I'm making it fast. You're almost at 3,000 on the big contract. You're at 137 on the smaller contract. Because, remember, I don't got 1,000 ticks on that smaller contract on the micros. I have it going 20, 40, 60, 80. So remember, it's, this is, the algo is trading the same way that you're trading on your own, uh, on your own, okay? So, it's only going to look for specific setups based upon the parameters that you put in it. Now, I don't have time to go over the parameters today. We'll do that in the next members only. And I'll have to shut that off for members only to go over the parameters. We won't have any trials to look at it or anything like that. But we will, uh, once you get the software, we will have a members only conference call only for the members. And I'll show you the parameters, how we can change those parameters to get the results that you want to get on small time frames and large time frames. But for the purpose of demonstration, it shows you what we can do. So you can see now we're at uh, 1.4. It's at 4.05 a.m. This is only going to look for trades from 9.30 right here, 9.30. That's what it took from 9.30 to 4. You can see the first initial ATR kept me in until my first target's off and had the rest at 70. Once 70 closed, it closes out 100% of the contracts. So that works. So you can adjust it how you want to adjust it. All right. It's going to start uh, coming up. It's 8 o'clock a.m. It's going to start uh, running trades at 9.30. That's how I have it set. And now we're going to run trades again. Now it's going to look for buy setups right now. Now it's going to look for sell setups. Red ATR. Now it's going to look for buy setups. This is fast, obviously. Market replay fast. So it's very specific. With the parameters I put in it, it's very specific when I want this thing to trade. It just doesn't buy and sell when you turn red or green. It's not that simple. Okay, I got a lot of parameters built into this for Momo trades, FZR trades, and I added a, um, I added two different um, 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 oscillators in there uh, that will show you when the market is time to look for a buy or sell. Okay, so if it doesn't meet those conditions, and I'll show you how to do these parameters on these time frames, it's not going to take a trade. It's very specific when it's going to take a trade. It's not going to buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. That, that's why this, uh, that's why our algorithm is so accurate on these longer time frames. So on that specific day, right, so we've had, right now, if we go to performance, when you right click on this, I hit live performance. Now you want to hit real time. So real time, we've had $150 drawdown on the big contract so far. Okay, that's because of the last contract on the 1,000 ticks. That's what it got out to. Okay, so there we go. We're waiting. Now we're waiting on what? It's 1.03 a.m. Now, like I said, if you want to run this 24 hours, you can do that too. I just want to show you from 9 to 4, and we'll go all the way to um, um, just to show you the impact, how that's going to be as far as that goes. But it's the same, same exact thing. In fact, let me put this on a 35 next to it so you can see. It runs exact trades that our algorithm that you have in your hands runs on that specific time frame. Okay, 9.45, we're trading in, looking for shorts, looking for shorts, looking for shorts. Now I had trend change, now it's going to look for longs. 
Now it's going to look for shorts. It's got to specifically meet the parameters or it's not going to run trades on these, on these longer, longer uh, as far as these longer time frames go. So the shorter time frames, if you want more setups, it will produce more setups, right? If you want to do that, you have to change the parameters, which I'll show you guys how to do. But I know a lot of traders, if you use longer time frame or shorter time frames, you just don't want a lot of setups. You want to see when the market is breaking down or breaking out, and then you want to see this market, you know, take advantage of that. But remember, the number was 15,000 on the replay. So we want to specifically look for that type of number in 1,500 10 days back. So our, is the historical data going to be the same thing as the replay data? Now, when you're running it 24-7, it'd be like this. So you'd be looking for a buy side setup. Um, you know, when the market opens back up, it just opened back up at uh, 1.6 is coming up. So you would look for a buy side setup if you're trading this manually, right, on this time. This is mat time frames matching this time frame. So you can, you can do it 24 hours also. So as it's moving, it's still looking for a buy setup now because we are green. So looking for a buy setup. Okay, now it's looking for a sell setup going into this trading day, going into 9 or it's 3.30 in the morning. So manually you can take trades off this larger time frame or you can do them off of this time frame here. I love this larger time frame as the largest one I like to use because you don't get a lot of setups, but at the same time um, results is what counts as far as that goes. There, see that big trade right there? Big trade right there happened as far as that one. Another one, another one, another one off the 24 hour. We're going into 9.30 coming up. 9.30 is coming up. Now it starts trading. It just took a long right off the open on the big contract and off the smaller contract. So you can see it's pretty much your one-tenth. You took another long here, another long. This is running. You can see that it's one-tenth pretty much. And it could be plus or minus, guys. Um, it, 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 it could be plus or minus uh, one-tenth of that, but you're about 47 there. You're 6,300 there on the big contract. This is with four contracts, okay? Um, but you can see it's not taking every trade. Now, what I added, and this is Phil's suggestion, which Phil made a great suggestion, um, I do have add-on trades. It'll take all these trades on add-on trades. So, Phil, all these trades right here, it would take that trade right here. Um, specifically, if you want those to take on the add-ons, it will take those trades. So, um, specifically with trend only if you want additional trade setups if you want this thing to be specific and not run as many trades you know you can do like i do and you can run as far as this goes so far so far on one six uh if we look at the big contract so far from one three to one six still we've had the drawdown mark replay we had 150 according to my parameters i have in looking pretty good there and this is running all the trades all year. I'm not cherry picking trades. It's taking all qualified trades from 9.30 to 4. Um, you can run it 24-7 too. But you see what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see from historical first. Then I go into market replay. Then I go into micros. Then you can move that a sim. Then you go into micros, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, Gerald, I'm sorry. This thing's cranking as fast as it can go, man. This, I knew this first one's going to be a long one. I knew it was going to be up a long one, but I'm sorry, man. I just said 30 minutes, and then I got called up. I want to make sure these guys understand how to do it. So the, from now on, guys, these conference calls are not going to be this long. It's the first time we're introducing this. So Gerald's pulling his hair out, saying all kinds of different language, you know, in, in the background. So we just hang with me here. I want to make sure you guys see a full – all the way up to date. So as we move forward, we're at uh, 9:21 p.m. And then once we get going into the um, once we get into the next uh, session seven. So let's take a look. So seven Saturday, right? Saturday. So we're waiting for Monday the ninth to come up. So we're waiting for the ninth to come up at 9:30. So let's look at this. Why this thing? Um, on how we can look at uh, trading this, why we're uh, waiting for this to start trading again. So remember, this one the algo didn't take specifically because it didn't hit the parameters. But you can you can elect to trade these add-on trades like this. This is a specific trade it can take if you want to take that add-on trade. 
this is another trade uh, this is the one trade that it did take right here because it hit the zone um, so you can trade this mainly the same way you don't have to even run the algorithm guys I mean the, the automation I mean, if you wanted to just run this right here manually and run this time frame this time frame is is a very accurate time frame you can see how my zones are my zones are very accurate likes to come out of the zone you do the same thing though you would run your manual trading the high of the bar would be the fill, and then um, you could have the trail work in for you as far as that goes. You want it manually. If you want to do it manually, just turn on the strategy and have the trail start trailing these after the arrow comes up, and you can manually get in and out and, and move your position manually when the trail moves if you don't want to do automation. Because when these arrows come up, all right, if you put the parameters the way you want to put them, the exact way you want to put them in, it's going to take the setup exactly when the parameters are showing it. So I'm going to put this to the side. Let me answer questions while we're getting through. Uh, where are we at? Eight. So we're on nine now. Okay. So it's going to start trading at 930 in the morning on January 9th. Um, we are on the second week of February. And then we'll play this third week and we'll be done with it. But let me go back and answer questions while you guys watch this. Hold on one sec. Cheryl, keep that thing running so we can see. Choosing, uh, Phil, choosing the Rico bar size does determine the minimum stop. Are using the tight uh, trail of our added to stop declines, but one take yes. As uh, like Phil's saying, as you move, guys. Okay, we're we're moving again, and you can watch the trail. What what Phil's talking about when the trail starts moving. Okay, I have a hard stop built into this right away, but as the trail kick, uh, kicks in right here, see this trail. If it closes below this trail at all, this initial trail, it's going to sell all the contracts completely, all of them. If you're doing four contracts, eight contracts, 12 contracts, doesn't matter. It's going to bail all these contracts. Remember, I got a 38 here and I got a 70 here. So it's going to bail all those contracts, all those contracts, okay? The trail is going to adjust with the stop. I don't believe in having break even plus one, having a trail, because the trail protects you as far as that goes. Now, here's the short side. See how it protects you down to target one? It protects you all the way to target one. And then I got this thing still running. Now, if you wanted a thousand tick target, um, you know, that's excellent on the close, but you can see that uh, that done very, very well. So starting out the week good, Monday the 9th is done very well. It had, had that big up session here. But what Phil's talking about to answer your question is, is you get a protection based upon the trailing stop loss. If you have four contracts long, the big, biggest risk you take is getting to target one, then what you need to do is if it closed below these guys, you're out. That's why the trailing stop loss works so well. Now you can have this one and you can have a second one. It's going for a second one. Uh, the second target, you can widen it. I have it at 70 on all four, but you can have a third one like this and then a fourth one and then a fifth one uh, also. You don't have to have just two ATR trails. As When the first target is hit, it's going to get all out at the first trail. When it's going for second target, it's going to use your second ATR target or stop and so on. Okay? Okay, so yeah, Phil's right. In the abstract, the Renko bar size choice indicates a maximum possible loss, but in a non-abstract realistic application of the strategy, the stop loss will, will the vast majority of the time be much with the maximum number. That is correct. Because once a trade starts going in your direction, it's going to trail. Your stop loss is going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, Phil says, using a larger wrinkle bar size has shown us that in general, filters out much of the noise that minimizes the stop out and maximizes profitable trades. This privilege comes at the cost of assuming a somewhat increased potential maximum stop loss. But as I pointed out, this is not this case because of stop loss of strategy. Yes. So as long as you trail, you, you, okay, see the trail right there? As long as this trail, you want to keep it tight initially. If you get stopped out after the second, third target, who cares? All right, who cares? Aaron, what buffers for time frame for open close of the market? It's already built into the strategy, Aaron, um, for open versus close. I've already had that built into the strategy. Does Ninja, Veronica, does NinjaTrader count for contract rollover when backtesting? Okay, so there is a program out there that does that, Veronica. If you want to do months and months of backtesting, 
let me look it up. You have to pay money for it. I know at, at some, at some of you traders use that already. Let's see if they'll post in the room. But there's a program that will do that for you. Yes. Yes. Now, Tina is going to help us out, um, one of our long-term members in the room. And thank you, Tina. Tina's going to run a 40-year back test for us. 40 years. You know, we're not talking about a month, two weeks. She's doing a four-year back test. So, Tina, we appreciate that. And we are going to show you the results on that, okay? What, what Tina did come up with, which I thought was interesting, is that uh, you don't want to uh, take any of these trades, FCR, Momo trades, uh, 20 minutes before, I mean, five minutes before or 20 minutes after, I mean, uh, 12 minutes after, 12 minutes after. So five minutes before news and 12 minutes after. That's historically, what, Tina, the last 50 years? Oh, she's going 50 years, sorry. 50 year, yes. Okay, so you can see that, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, it is too much to go over in one, one session. We're getting there, Gerald. We're coming. We're almost on the last week, buddy. Almost on the last week, man. <laughs> it's not halfway. We're almost there, buddy. It's, we're almost there. Okay, so you see how we take the trade here. We got the initial uh, the trailing stop. Gerald's never going to forgive me for this. He's probably never going to record another session ever in his life. So, but we thank Tina for doing the 50-year back test for us. And the cool thing is uh, we can back test ATR links, initial ATR, running ATR. I, I pretty much think that my, my zones are dead, dead on. You know, the, my 54, 38, man, they reverse the market so well. It's there, beautiful. I think my ATR uh, trails are pretty good, but we'll, we'll see. We'll let the 50 years. I, I did not back test at 50 years, so you know I can't. I'm not going to put the my foot before put my mouth, and then all of a sudden something comes up different. But we will have that 50 year back test. So you can see it comes in the close. Um, so now we're at uh, what 112? What date is that? 112 is a Thursday, last Thursday. So we got the 13th, and then we'll let it run through the 16th through the 19th. Now remember. The last 10 days, I showed you before we did this. I want to show you how close this stuff is because we want to make sure that um, I want to show you the right way how to do this. So here we start trading again at midnight. I mean at 9.30 a.m., sorry. Now it took another short here. Initial stop. Didn't stop out. Profit target, profit target. And there it is. See, now when it closes outside, let me just move this back. When it closes outside here, guys, and this thing can keep running. When it closes outside, that's why I love these trailing stops. When it closes outside my 70, you want to take that last contract off. Now, yesterday, guys, it held all the way, which I'll show you in the back test, too, in the forward test and the market replay, and I had it running live yesterday. It, it will hold literally all the way in the close. It did it two Fridays in a row where it held from 10 o'clock all the way to the close. 50 points yesterday, 50 points on one contract. And what it did, because the 70 never broke, right? So you, I, I love that 78 uh, ATR with this algorithm. works really well. But as far as that goes, um, we are at, what is, 112. 112, we are still on Thursday. Yeah, we're still on Thursday here. So let me get this back down. So this is not enough for you guys to run. You can uh, alter the parameters which I'll show you how to do but I will do it in a members only conference call. I'm gonna show you how to alter it, get more con more setups. But if I'm sorry if you're not a member, we will not be showing you uh, how to change parameters and how to adjust this stuff. But you get the, the gist of it is what we're trying to do here. I I can I can show you how to increase uh, trades and I can show you how to decrease trades. All right. And then we'll have a 50 year back test on those time frames as far as that goes. So here we got, we're at uh, 3.40 a.m. It's looking for a setup right now. Remember, I had this starting at 9.30, but you can just see a set, we're looking for a sell setup. Sell setup here. I want a sell setup. I want to see an arrow short. We're at 5 a.m. in the morning. On this, As far as this time frame goes, looking for a short. There's a short, FZR short here. That's an FZR short. The fill would have been 96 short all the way down to 86. The software, I love this software. 
96, that's a 10 point run. All right now we're down all the way down. Look at that. Look at how that ran. Now we're coming in 930. So you can trade it before guys. This works 24 hours a day. But you don't just have to trade this right here. You can see on the 24 hour session, there's a short, then it went right back long. So if you've seen that, your ATR and your hard stop, it take you out and there's a long position right there if you want to do the add on trades. So you can do more trades if you want. I have this set up to take less trades, but it would have took a trade there. It would have took a trade there. So you could see that you, you can take, this is not the limit of this. I just limit the number based upon the parameters I put in. It would take another trade there. And so you can see you can take more trades or less trades as you want and have a running ATR. So if you get in here, it won't even take this trade or this trade because you have a running ATR below you. And it can run and it still keep you in. So you won't even get long on these or this one because you're still long on this one. So even though it's not running trades on my algorithm I'm showing you now, you can see that you can toggle it on to take trades. And members, I'll show you how to do this. So just from the open right there alone, I mean, since 9.30, one, two, three, four, five different trades, and this trade will still be running to the upside. If you elect to do that, if you want more accuracy and less setups, I'll show you how to do that in the algorithm. Now, it did take some S&P trades over here. I'm sorry. It did take a trade here. All right, so it got change of trend. It caught the change of trend. Initial contract, it had a tight ATR, and then they all got stopped out there. So now we're looking at uh, 15,700, 1,500. You can see it's pretty close. It's 10 to 1. We're pretty close. All right, we're on the 13th now. The 13th, Gerald's going to be happy when this is done. We just have the 23rd, 24th, I mean the uh, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th this week, Gerald, and you can shut this thing off. Oh, he's going to kill me. You're going to kill me, aren't you, buddy? 30 minutes. Oops, sorry, man. I got caught up in it going to kill me. Sorry. Next week, I promise, 29 minutes. In fact, we're going to cut off at 25 minutes next week because now they know a lot of how to do it. Right. Oh, sorry, man. He's going to kill me. All right. So anyway, we're at 114. I just want to show, I want to show you that we, you don't have to, I don't want to cherry pick these results. I want to show you running every trade from 930 to 4. And next week we'll do the we'll start out right away and do the 24 hour session right away, and we'll do uh, all of this week and, and next week, and then we'll show uh, different time frames also. All right. So now we're coming into the 14th. So now we're waiting. We're waiting on uh, let's see 14th is Saturday. So waiting on the 16th. 16th is we'll start trading. Let's see the type of results we got using these specific parameters all year. 2023 so we're still uh still looking good still looking good there there's your max draw on the big contract small contract let's see if we had any losses on that one and you had a twelve dollar drawdown on the on the larger contract on the micro sorry all right, so we're looking for the uh, da, 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 looking for the two, 16th coming up. We're on the 15th. We're on Sunday, 8 a.m. Uh, but like I said, you can take when you're trading this, guys. Is that these are more setups. The cool thing about the trailing ATR is once you get into a type of setup like this, you won't have to take these additional setups because your trailing ATR, if you adjust it enough. You say the first one on the first target is going to be X amount of ticks below the, the my. So if this is a 20 Renko bar, that'd be 23. Then you say the next one on my second target is going to be 38. And the next one is going to be 54. Right? And the next one's going to be 70. You see what I'm saying? Having multiple ATRs after targets hit is is just beautiful. It works so good. And it reduces risk. And that's what we want. So we're coming into Monday, uh, 115. That's Sunday night uh, so far. And this thing will start uh, trading again. But just always remember is that you don't. You can run the indicator off this. You don't have to even run the strategy. You can run the indicator off this. The indicator will fire these arrows. They will fire these arrows for you. On the indicator. So the indicator will fire these arrows for you like that. And like that, 
you know, they will fire them off these larger or smaller time frames. I show a 120-20 in the room. We're showing a 135-35 here. And um, so now we're rolling. Here we go. So now we're rolling. We're looking for setups. Just start trading. So if I had this on the 24-hour session, it's going to look for setups. Now it's looking for what? Buy setups. We're looking for buy setups. Now we're looking for sell setups. Trend change. We're looking for sell setups. Looking for a red arrow sell setups. It's 5.30 in the morning. We're looking to short. So looking to short. 7.35 in the morning. Looking for a short. Still nothing. Large. Now trend change to the upside. Nothing. Nothing pulled us in. No trades. No arrows. No worries. Now we're starting to trade on our other time frames. Other time frames starting to trade. Oh, no. It's Martin Luther King Day. Sorry. Not going to trade Martin Luther King Day. Sorry about that. Martin Luther King Day was only open to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Monday. So now we're finally in this week, Gerald. We're almost there, buddy. So uh, here we go. We're going to start looking for setups. It opened back at 6 o'clock at night. It's looking for a buy side, set, a buy side setup on the 24-hour chart. This chart will not open, like I said, this chart does not open up till 9.30 to 4. It's got to go 9.30 to 4 before it even starts opening, starts taking trades. It's at 10, 18 p.m. You guys won't be trading during that time. So right at midnight, it will start trading, and we're going to start looking for setups. So then what happens is what we're going to do is we're going to wait. If you have the 24 session on, it's going to start looking for setups again. And this one will start trading it right at 9.30. 9.30 is coming up. So now I'm looking for a sell setup. So these are sell setups as far as you look for the 24-hour session. You're looking for sell setups at 6 a.m. in the morning, 6.40 in the morning. I don't know if you guys start trading that time, but I like this, the zone. It's got to keep in the zone, and it's going to look for sell or buy setups according to this time frame. So once that clicks in at 9.30, then we're going to start seeing some trades uh, start firing off at 9.30. So 9.30 comes in. Now it's going to start looking for buy or sell setups where the volume is. All right, so you can elect to take add-on trades after 9.30 here, which it arrow fired. I have it specifically only a certain um, parameter that I'm looking for to take trades. I'll leave this right here on the 24-hour chart. This is running all trades for the entire year of 2023. So the 24-hour chart, it actually ran that trade right here. But on my chart, with my specific parameters I put in, I did not like to take that. And like I said, members, I'll show you those parameters when we get to that. And the members-only conference call. Because it's CHOP. I have this set up to avoid CHOP. This one's to avoid CHOP. See us chopping? CHOP, 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 CHOP. Watch when it breaks loose, though, after CHOP. So now on 117, we have... Uh, 118 will be coming up, and then we'll go into today's trading also. So only two more days here. We got 117 is yesterday. Now it's going to take this huge short, big short yesterday. Watch how the market. Remember how the market got cranked yesterday? Watch how the algo picked it up. The settings I have built into it picks it up. Now here's earlier, right in the 24-hour session, it caught some good shorts. Right here's a short right here. See how that 24-hour session is catching the short? It catches a lot of them on that 24-hour. But the I'm waiting for this one from 9.30 to 4 to take all trades. Right now it's 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, 7.40. So let me get off here because at 9.30 this thing's going to start cranking trades out. Watch this. Catches that big short. It avoids all that chop we had in the morning. Here we go, 9.30. Algo's now looking for trades, 9.30 to 4 on a specific time frame. Now we're looking to see if it can produce some setups. We're breaking down. It's going to start looking for sell setups. There it is. There's a sell setup, trailing initial first contracts, next contracts. Now it's going to hold that last contract. It's going to hold for 1,000 ticks. It's going to sell this for 1,000 ticks. Watch this. Hold this all day long. I have this set at 20, 40, 60, 80. So this is just getting me out of my specific ones here. This is the micros. 
this is the large contract. Look how it comes up to the ATR. Doesn't hit it, right? It, because my zone reverses it again. Look at my zone. Reverse it again. There's my zone. Never violate. So it's going to keep short. Profit right there on the micros. Done well. It's going to take another. Um, so th as far as that goes, it, it, it jumped back here short as far as that goes, as far as the... Um, as far as the micros go. So let's take a look at what we got here so far since the beginning of January. We only got one day to go today. As far as those parameters, that's only with four contracts. Pretty good, right? So remember, past performance does not indicative of future results. Don't. This is an educational room. You can use this to your to run as fast as you can or as slow as you can. That's why you sign risk disclaimers. But we, we try to put you in the best possible um, setups with the algorithm. That's why we're running a full year on this thing. We'll do this also. We'll continue to do this, these trades for you as the year goes along. 24 hours starts ticking. You can see there's an arrow that fired. That would be short the algo right there if you want to let this thing run 24 hours a day. That's a hell of a short. What was it? 35 short, still short. It's now down to 10, up 25 S&P points just starting out at 3 o'clock in the morning. But see, this won't start trading. Um, until the morning session here. Now it's going to start looking for longs. I talked about this today. I talked about how we're looking for this to do a uh, um, a push up based upon the uh, based upon the um, the bear trap. So now we're looking for setups. This is our last trading day, the 19th. We're looking for a setup. The S&P does take a setup here, according to this specific algorithm. Now, like I said, you can take other setups like this if you want, add-ons if you want. Let's finish this thing off. I think it gets over 20 for the for the for the year so far. There it is. First off, but the runner doesn't run very much. So that will do it all the way into the close. And Let's take a look at uh, what we got. So we're into the close right now. That's 4 o'clock tonight. So that's a good way to do it. Real time, I played every trade since 9.30 to 4 on replay. And like I said, remember, past results are not indicative of future results. Don't get caught up in that. And they'll say, well, Jay, you said this. That. Not, I'm not saying anything. You know, I'm, this is an educational room. So, you know, that's why you're signing risk disclaimers. I'm showing you how this thing's built and the capability of it. There's your micros. Uh, we will have a members conference call on this. Micros had a drawdown of 1250 um, on four contracts with two, and there you go. All right.